This is how it looks like when I warm up for my run. I start out with a real brisk walk. I grab myself some Mind Bullet. You can get yours at mindbullet.com. Grab some Kratom. This bottle is eight grams of Kratom, so I usually just down half of it. And then I'll, I'll walk, and as I'm walking, my body's warmed up, the Kratom will kick in, and I'll feel really good to start running. A couple tips as it pertains to walking. You shouldn't really need tips for walking, but I think some of uh, modern life has left us stiff and um, because we really don't uh, sit on the floor and do things like that as much. We're more in chairs, we stuff our feet into shoes. We went, end up with issues uh, with the feet, which can cause issues of the knees and the hips and so on, right? And then all the sitting that we do, all the on the phone stuff that we do, causes a forward head posture, kind of a rounded upper back, even some lifting can cause you to kind of be stuck and, and be in here. All the lifting I did keeps me really tight. So when I'm walking, I'm trying just to have a cooler pattern and it can be done very easily by using your by using your hands. You can just kind of internally rotate the hand a little bit. If you bring the hand in towards the midline of your body, towards the V, I'm, I'm doing it excessively here, but then we get a little bit of rotation, okay? And then the next thing that almost automatically happens is we get a small rotation of the back foot from behind and it looks like this. So it might start out as like a little bit of a rotation just because we're exaggerating, just because I want you guys to feel. It's an internal rotation and a push off of toes three, four, and five. And for me, something I've had to practice and work on is leaving my foot on the ground longer in my walks. And what I mean by that is I need to get more distance here because I'm very, very tight. All those years of bracing on those thousand pound squats and those big deadlifts and stuff, it left me very tight through here. So for me to like open up or, or be up in here, just is very uncomfortable. The next thing we want to do in our walk is we always want to expose ourselves. I use the word always, that's a mistake. We want to oftentimes expose ourselves to the sun as, uh, as much as we can possibly handle. So if you're a person and you don't want to, you know, whip the shirt off, maybe you just roll the sleeves up on a walk. Maybe if you're in long sleeve, you just hike up the sleeves a bit. If you're in shorts that are, my shorts are always short, but if you're in shorts that are a little long, maybe just hike them up a bit, maybe push down your socks or pull up a pant leg. Try to get some good exposure to the sun. You'd be shocked at what it does for your metabolism over time. On top of that, it helps uh, regulate our melatonin. It will help regulate your circadian rhythm and your sleep and also helps produce vitamin D, which we know is really strong for the immune system and just very good for your heart and very good for your brain to get out in the sun. So I've been promoting 10 minute walks for a really long time. I just kind of told you a little bit of how to walk. And one of the main things I've been preaching about a lot is the head over foot. So if Ryan can get ahead of me and film me as straight as possible, we want to go head over your foot. Now a lot is made of like this kind of stuff. Like, you know, should my, is it okay if I walk like this? Is it okay if I, if I walk like this? Like LeBron walks like this. Like I don't have a, a crazy amount of concern over that. What I would concentrate on is getting that head over the foot and trying to push off the toes three, four, and five. And seeing if you can get a little bit of internal rotation and a little bit of a push off with each step. So there should be, should be walking like you're a goddamn boss and also walking with a purpose. So there's a stroll, which a lot of times when I'm on this walk, it sometimes starts as a, a stroll. As I get more warm, I might start to walk faster, but sometimes I'm actually texting and walking. Then I'm like, okay, I don't need to text anymore. I need to concentrate on what I'm about to do. And so my walk will go from being very leisure to being a little bit more intense. And that's about it. It doesn't get any more, I don't get any more. I sometimes will go on a walk with family members and they sometimes, they sometimes really fly. And it actually annoys me. I don't like that because I'm a, uh, I'm either going nice and easy or I'm going really hard. I don't really like 
that little tweener thing, like I do it for running sometimes because it's pretty beneficial, but I don't, I don't love it. So like when my family members, my wife especially, she's always like hauling ass when she's walking. I don't, I don't love the way that that feels. It doesn't feel like uh, recovery. It doesn't feel fun for me. So the last piece of this is to do what feels good for you and to do what's gonna be good for you, for your body. You wanna always treat your body with the utmost respect and you always wanna, if the body's giving you negative feedback, it's negative feedback. Um, if the mind is giving you negative feedback, then sometimes that's bullshit, right? But if the body is telling you, bro, like it ain't there today, something's up with the ankle. Something's up with the ankle, that's it. You know, it's uh, sometimes some of these things you have to pay attention to. So you might have to train appropriately around that. Strength is never weakness, weakness is never strength. Teaching the world how to walk, teaching you how to move, teaching you how to groove. All started with showing you guys how to bench, squat, and deadlift. Catch you guys later.